On this edition of Check 6 Aviation, we're talking about upgrades for the RV-10 Part 2. How you doing my friend? It's Raymond back again and if you haven't been under a rock lately, you know that we just got back from Oshkosh. We just finished up and man, what a blast it was. And of course, all about Oshkosh is not just the air show, not just the forums and the different how-to sessions, but also the chance to meet up with some manufacturers of upgrades for the RV-10. So that is exactly what this is. Yeah, I know that there are a lot of them out there. So if you know any of them that I haven't covered yet uh, in either this video or that video up there, then please list them down below in the comment section. Uh, I'll also put a you know, link in the description for of this video for each of the you know, the people that I talked to in Oshkosh and list in this video. And let me tell you, there were some things in, in I had Oshkosh that ex absolutely blew me away. Uh, for example, air text. Yeah, yeah, yeah you'll see. It, it just blew me away. It's, it's like bringing the airlines into general aviation, in my opinion. And so, let's get into it, shall we? All right, so I'm always talking about upgrades, trying to find the latest and best upgrades for the RV-10 or for any experimental aircraft for that matter. And I just happened to run into Daniel here from C uh, CIES, SICE. 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 SICE Connected. And Daniel, what were you telling me about what you offer here? So what we offer, especially for the RV, is so when when you go to install those uh, those tanks in there, you're putting a sender in there that's recommended by the factory that's a resistive sender, and you're gluing it into the tank. And so what we do is a magneto-resistive sender. There's no contact with it. This will last longer than everybody that's in this building right now. Uh, definitely outlive me, uh, the host right here. Uh, it will... Uh, and so once you put it in there, you're done. And it's going to tie to the G3X. It's going to tie to Dynon or whatever other instruments you want. We do uh, offer a certified product. And we do not uh, change it for the, for the experimental market. So you're getting the same thing that everybody's getting in their brand new series. So basically, you know, do... It goes back to the fundamentals of, of mechanics. Do the job right the first time and you won't have to go back to doing it again. Yes. And uh, you said that the light, average lifetime of the factory is what, two, a couple years? Two, two three years. And, I mean, and it's it, differential metal corrosion happens almost immediate, immediately as soon as you put that in the tank. And so, so it just makes sense just to, once you go ahead and start building, getting into the tank portion of your, uh, of your build, just to go ahead and give you guys a call. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, and a lot of, uh, if you look on the Vans Air Force Forum, there's a lot of people who have actually done this. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of them that have actually also extended the, uh, the travel of their senders by putting an additional unit out in the outboard uh, end of the tank. For, for like, uh, a backup? Well, no, it's, so essentially the way that tank is designed uh, your sender is going to top out with still five gallons to go. Okay. There's nothing we can do about that. Um, so what other customers have done have included another sender out at the other side that that gains that other five gallons. Okay. So if you want the total fuel from top to bottom, that's how you have to do it. But in your case, um, you know, your tank will just burn five gallons and then it will read accurately to the bottom where you actually really need it. Okay. Um, and that's something in the factory that your resistive sender is going to be the same thing uh, no matter what you put in there. It's going to wait until it drops. Okay. But check this out, guys. Check this out. This, this is this is sturdy. This is not like just the, real, the, the regular wire and resistor rheostat that you would see in the yeah you know, from other videos that I've seen of the van, of the fuel tanks. So of course, of course the gauge isn't working. Though. No, it's it's that's a uh, that's a feature, not a bug. So that's damping. So 
You see how it takes, it's got a 15 second delay on it. Ah. So th what that's showing you is, you know, if you're in turbulence, you don't want to see your fuel gauge just sit there and go back up and up and down. Yeah, and, and yeah. It, let's face it, the passengers don't want to see that either. No, they don't. No, no, and that's what I, that's where we come in. I, I get more uh, more wives and, and happy customers come up, shake my hand, thank you. You know, my passengers feel better. They don't see a red light flashing saying low fuel. Because uh, the old resistive senders, that's their failure mode. They they go down to where they just basically look like a windshield. Okay, all right. And, you know, there, there's a lot of people out there that are cost conscious. Yes. So, you know, the, the, the stock ones from Vans, they're good, they work, they're safe, there's nothing wrong with them, uh, except for the, the durability. The durability compared, and... Compared to you guys. Yeah. Um, so what about cost, though? So cost for the, the ones that Vans will recommend, I want to say it's about $60, right? Very, very cheap, um, but very cheaply made. They're made for Marine applications they're not made for aircraft i can't stress that enough they are not uh they will last only a couple of years our senders are going to come in at 455 currently that's at oshkosh right now so it is a lot bigger of a price tag but uh there's probably a reason you guys decided on the garmin or uh, the dynon and those are both very expensive units uh, so you get what you pay for and it's a cost per wear kind of issue so how many times are you going to use your aircraft how many times are you going to drain the tanks because each time you drain the tank that's when your resistive sender starts to fail as each time it goes down it's the the fuel is coming out of the resistive sender but the additives are staying behind and those additives build up and they end up sticking your sender right on right on so for people to get in touch with you yep go to I'll, I'll put I'll tell you what I'll post uh, I, I've got your card yep I'll post the link down in the show notes okay. and also on the screen so all right it is Oshkosh and what better way to get a feel of what's available for the experimental market especially for my Vans RV10 and everyone else in the Vans community than to walk around the show plaza you know, the hangars and here, standing behind me, is my good friend Damien from Avio Engineering. Yeah, but damn, you're really good at this. Am I supposed to be that good? <laughs> Alright, I'll try my best, guys. I'm not as good as he is. That's okay, he's just being really humble. That, yeah, he, he's, he, he's really like a mushroom. A real fun guy. <laughs> That's funny. I might use that again. <laughs> okay, alright. So, so anyways, uh, here we are, Oshkosh 2022. Uh, we have the zip tip for the RV10 on display here. So obviously we have the uh, landing lights, three of them at 12 degree dispersion. We've got taxi lights at 43 degree angle dispersion. And they wig wag and recognition back and forth. Um, I've got the, uh, this particular one is the uh, right hand side tip. So this is the green nav light. I got the strobes. And I also have the rear position, rear strobes. Um, we have a, an, uh, a little bit of an upswept wingtip, which is designed to eliminate some wingtip vortex drag. Um, I mean, and it looks cool. I it, sold about 128 sets last year of uh, zip tips, and two people wanted the Hershey Bar Straight Van Style tips which I still have those molds for. It's no difference in price. It's the same materials. If you want them, we can make them same six to eight week delivery time as these are. Um, but most people want the upswept wingtip, the new style. And, um, and what does that do for, yeah, for people? I mean, you, well, you, you, I you mean, it eliminates wingtip vortex drag. So right. obviously you're going to get some small modicum with more top speed, not much more than a mile an hour. And, um, and does, doesn't that uh, do something to the yeah, stall speed? Well, it lowers the stall speed, uh, reportedly about one, not less stall speed, and also um, gives you a little bit more aileron control authority as it tends to corral the wind flow over the aileron a little bit better instead of it sliding off the end of the wing. It tends to, I mean, I don't have much in the way of um, technical wind tunnel proof of this. I just have a customer that built two RV7s and 
the first plane had the straight tips and he built the second plane when he had uh, when, when the um, the winglets were available and so he built his second plane with the winglets and he's an FAA DAR and I respect his uh, uh, observations of the planes that he's built and that's it was his takeaway from the difference between the two planes that he had built right on at, at least he had something to compare it to he you had know to compare it to immediately yeah and apparently he lives in one of these flying communities out in Oregon he's an FAA DAR uh, his name is Gary Brown cool very cool customer but he was in he was a uh, he, he was uh, he was very um, he really wanted the upswept wingtip. He he pitched it to my boss that owns the company, Chris Nielsen from Avio Engineering, and uh, you know Chris rolled the dice and spent 45 grand on about eight new molds. It takes about eight molds to make these. Now the other thing, speaking of the eight molds, there's one thing that we got going on with this is that we're using Airx foam. That's all those little white dots. That's a that's a real thin layer of Airx structural foam that's not used in any other tips that are available. Um, we sandwich this in between layers two and three of the glass, and then we vacuum bag the whole thing. So this is not a hand laid up tip. This is every last heavy drop of epoxy is sucked out of this tip uh, in the vacuum bagging technology um, with some Airx foam. We also have a, a structural bulkhead that we mount the lights to that gives you additional rigidity. If you ever have a problem with anything uh, in our electronics, we have an access panel, so you don't have to take the whole tip off your plane. Um, I'll just, just That's a it. huge bonus. Yeah, it's just electrical tape. I'm just gonna pull it off in here. So, so this is the tip inside. We give you the other plug that plugs into the Tyco electronic um, bulkhead mount right there. So the, a plug will come in right here and plug into there and any of these components can be removed and replaced instead of having to replace the whole module and and, that's a, and not only that but these just look darn cool i mean they're pretty hot yeah yeah so I mean, we don't say so myself we, we've got this smaller version here in carbon fiber well that's for a cessna 150 152 but we also have it we're really this is stc we're really close so this is experimental. We're, this is uh, certified stuff. We're really close to having STCs on the 177 Cardinal, the 182 going up to the 421. We're going to be building tips for. Okay. This one's an optional carbon. We can, I can make the zip tip in carbon. However, if you do do that, you're not going to have glide slope antenna functionality at all. So fiberglass is a standard price, 36, 35. About $300 shipping, flat rate, oversized three ground, UPS. Um, if you want carbon fiber, it's $250 more. Cessna, it's $200 more, but let me tell you, if you're gonna do carbon, be my guest, but I would recommend, we, have, we offer a three quarter carbon, which means you tell me what wingtip you're gonna put your antennas in, and I'll build you a full carbon on the left. You're gonna put it in the right. We're gonna build you a top carbon, bottom fiberglass, a three-quarter set. Okay. And then you can put your antennas in, and they'll see things. Whereas if you make it all carbon, they won't. Right on. Don't ask me how I know that. Uh. <laughs> Lessons hard learned in the industry, but Absolutely. everybody's gonna figure it out. Absolutely. So, yeah, a little bit of um, transparency. I am a customer. I have my my tips on order. Um, I rip him off and I pass the savings on to you. And that's just the kind of <laughs> guy I am. Edit I'll take out. Edit that out. <laughs> I, I I take the fall for my viewers and my listeners. So <laughs> um but uh, edit that out. No, 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 that was good. That was that was good. <laughs> I'll keep that in. But but seri in all seriously, <clears throat> in all seriousness. Um, I am now. Now I'm, yep. now I'm like a rock star. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? You, if you put me on the camera 10 minutes, now I'm like ready to go. So so in all, seri in, in all seriousness, though, I've been keeping my ear to the ground and, um, you know, kind of keeping track of what you guys got going on through the grapevine. Okay, yeah. I hear of something coming in the near future. Are we talking about the Vegas tips now? The cat's out of the bag already. Viva Las right, Vegas, so baby. Viva Las Vegas. All right. Here's what I know about the Vegas, and I don't know much, but Vegas is gonna have some bells and whistles that are not 
included in the original tips, but you're still gonna have the same airfoil shape, you're still gonna have the same winglet design, but we're gonna include a couple of things that we're working on, because technology marches forward. So we're gonna have like, Damien's RB7 printed on the ground with like a little bit of a ground projection thing. We're gonna have lights illuminating your rear tail, uh, nighttime pre-flight inspection, light ground illumination, and uh, the, so for, for military customers, we're, we got this warp speed thing where it's 28 mile visibility. So Ooh. it could come to pass that we could incorporate this into the zip tip. We, we think it'll fit. But it's not here yet. I mean, this is right. maybe right. Oshkosh next year. So we should let them know that that all of this, you know, with the Vegas tips, is subject to change. There are some things that are, are, oh, yeah. are going to be... Oh, yeah, this is a pre-production. I mean, we're just playing in the lab. Yeah, exactly. At this point. And, and also feeling out what's it, you know, what's, what the market is coming are. out with some new stuff with vans and... You know, we're like, oh, okay, we have competition, all of, a sudden, all of a sudden somebody, well, they don't have them here, I wish they did, I wanted to see them, I went all the way, I hiked all the way the heck over there to see them, they yeah. didn't have them, so, I was yeah. like, bummer, but, but um, but you're also, you're also kind of feeling out what the market forces are, too, right, you know, so, but we already were thinking, like, well, we can do this, we can do that now, for other customers that want it, well, can we incorporate that into our lawyer, our very loyal customer base for the vans? You know, just maybe, what, what, I mean, how much extra would it cost to just put that little extra thing in here and there? And so at the end of the day, it's gonna be the same physical shape. It's gonna be the same conformer, uh, the same uh, uh, configuration where you have landing taxi, wig by recognition, red and green strobe, rear position, rear strobe, but we're gonna have some tail illumination, some ground illumin illumination. Maybe we can just say, hey, it's, Bill's RB10 on the ground, just like Mercedes does when you open the door. And then also, we got the, if the warp speed project comes up, we're gonna have a really powerful taxi light, which will wigwag at 28 mile visibility, which is insane. If, if we could get it in here, we might be able to. We're working so, on it, we think we can. So if you get the warp speed taxi light going, is it, are we gonna see like the effects of going through a wormhole? Yeah, like I, you know, I would go to Harbor Freight and get those $5 welding goggles. <laughs> I own them in my pool bag down there. <laughs> right Man. on. So I saw a video uh, recently. It was uh, involving a Cessna where the owner of the aircraft had some radio communication problems after he flipped on his LED. For, you know, his LED powered lights. Oh, we're going back to like 2015, 16? Yeah, I, I'm not sure where. So the, um, we stopped development back in 2017 for about six months. Bought that $10,000 radio, put it in the laboratory, figured out what the problem was. The problem was more with Garmin than it was with us, but we put a lot of uh, copper shielding in. So it's a military spectrum parts. We fixed it in 2018 so, so, and everybody so you're, got... So you're saying that, that you're not, that uh, this pilot was not the only one that experienced your, your earlier versions, it had the same problem. Well, when the Garmin radio came out, uh, there was no problem with our lights until Garmin came out with that radio. Okay. And then when they did, we basically had to replace everybody's lights that owned that Garmin radio. Garmin wasn't going to fix the problem, so we had to go. We just did the bullet. All I mean, right. We got money enough to do that. I mean, it wasn't... You know, I mean, it sucked, but I mean, we did it. I mean, we took care of everybody. Nobody has the older tips with the older modules that has a Garmin. And, and the lights weren't any brighter, and there was nothing different about it. You got another set of lights that did not, your radio could not, it would not break the squelch of your radio. Okay. So everybody got new lights. They were the same as so, the ones you had before. So you took care of your customers? We took care of every single one. And to my knowledge, if somebody has some other, you know, lights, they, you know, my, my business card is over there, but to my knowledge, about a year ago, I took care of everyone. I haven't had anybody else left, so. And that is how you know you're dealing with a reputable company, so. I mean, it wasn't our fault, but we took care of it because we could, you know. It, it wasn't that big of a deal to order some military spec components and thwart the problem adding your input buffer. I'm not the electrical engineer, it's right. above my pay grade. You know, but uh, so whatever the issue was with the Garmin radio, it wasn't that big of a deal for us to make a workaround. Right. Which is which we did to everybody years so, ago. So guys, yeah, 
I love these tips. I love this company, and I really like this guy. Um, not not any any. Uh, we're not gay guys. We're just yeah. here at Oshkosh on well, the last day. Well, we're, well, we are. We are. We I are, am a little fond of you. We we are happy though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. I don't know, I've never, you never, nobody, no, no customer has ever put me on camera before, so <laughs> excuse my camera shyness. Oh, please, you come out of it like a turtle poking his head out of a shell. <laughs> Am I not turtly enough for the turtle club? <laughs> All right, well, so, practice makes perfect. That's this is right. My first time. That's right. Next time so, will be better. That, that's right. So, guys, I'm going to put a link to the website in the description below. Uh, I believe in this product, I believe in this company, and I believe in, you know, in anything this guy says. And because not only to have, not only have I heard it from the horse's mouth, and you're not a horse, by the way, but, um, but I- stallion, brother. Just, <laughs> the Ferrari. I got jokes, man, you got me on camera still. So, but, but I, I've also reached out to other people in the, in the Evio engineering customer community and they've backed up everything this guy has said. So, uh, link in the description below, avioengineering.com. I'll also put, um, yeah. So, reach out to him. Get them while you, get them while you can because. <laughs> yeah, I'm going. I'm going places. Cause, yeah, yeah. Because. Well, it is Sunday. I am going home. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Eventually. So, Damien, always Thank a pleasure. You, sir. This is a pretty cool uh, uh, product for the RV10. It's essentially a uh, altitude callout device. You stick this in one of the two inspection panels under the wing, and it has a lidar sensor that takes measurements 100 times a second. And you'd wire it up to your audio panel, and it would do callouts all the way from starting at 500 feet, 400, 300, 200, all the way down to one foot. Um, and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, we actually developed and designed it in the owner of the company's RV10. Ooh. We have a video actually. 200. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. So, I need that for my landings. <laughs>